Imagine an alternate universe where The Undertaker was dunking hoops instead of burying his opponents in the ring with choke slams. Well, it was this close to becoming reality, and all it took was one decision that changed the course of his entire life. This is the story of the dead man, The Undertaker. I get it. With a career spanning nearly four decades, it's almost impossible to imagine Mark Calloway anywhere but inside the squared circle. But it's true. Long before he walked out to the ring to the sound of spooky music and smoke bathed in blue light, The Undertaker was a redheaded powerhouse on the basketball court. But when he was offered a shot to play pro ball in France, he surprised everyone by choosing to pursue a career in wrestling instead. And let's just say he made the right choice. So, after graduating from Houston's Waltrip High School in 1983, Callaway set his sights on a career in wrestling. After training under Buzz Sawyer, Mark Calloway began his professional wrestling career in 1987 as Texas Red for World Class Championship Wrestling. He went on to wrestle under various gimmicks for other organizations before joining WCW in 1989 as Mean Mark Callis. There, he would wrestle alongside Dan Spivey as a part of the Skyscrapers tag team. However, Calloway began to question his future in WCW after being told by company booker Ollie Anderson that no one would pay to watch him perform. If he only knew. Anyways, Mark made numerous efforts to join the World Wrestling Federation and eventually landed a meeting with Vince McMahon after being recommended by Hulk Hogan, Paul Heyman, and Bruce Prichard. And in 1990, Calloway finally signed with the WWF. Vince pitched the idea of an Old West Undertaker, a concept he had wanted to create for years, but had never found the right wrestler for it. And that's when Mark Calloway became The Undertaker. Mark made his televised debut at Survivor Series 1990 as part of Ted DiBiase's Million Dollar Team, and he made quite an impression that night. Taker quickly eliminated Coco Beware with his Tombstone Piledriver finisher and also eliminated Dusty Rhodes before being counted out himself. The Undertaker quickly became a fan favorite and began racking up wins against some of the promotion's biggest names. The Undertaker made his WrestleMania debut in 1991 when he defeated Superfly Jimmy Snuka. This also marked the beginning of his legendary streak. He won his first WWE Championship in 1991 by defeating Vince's golden boy, Hulk Hogan. And guys, believe me, not a lot of people were allowed to do that back then. It was clear that the company had its faith in Taker. After finishing up his rivalry with Hogan, Taker turned face when he stopped Jake Roberts from attacking Miss Elizabeth, the Raw, and faced Giant Gonzalez at WrestleMania 9. Things were going great for Taker, and he looked virtually unstoppable until he met Yokozuna at the Royal Rumble in January 1994. But The Undertaker later appeared on the video screen, warning that he would produce a future rebirth of himself. Upon his return, The Undertaker's character transformed from an undead zombie mortician to a more gothic figure resembling a god. He continued his seemingly endless feud with Ted DiBiase's Million Dollar Corporation until late 1995 at which point he re-entered the main event scene and faced his biggest challenge yet when Mankind debuted in WWE. The two wrestlers faced off in the first Buried Alive match in 1996. The Undertaker spent early 1997 returning to the WWE title picture after a controversial finale to that year's Royal Rumble. He eventually went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Psycho Sid for the belt at WrestleMania 13 which marked not only the beginning of his second career jackpot win, but also his sixth straight WrestleMania win overall. His most memorable WWE storyline began as Paul Bearer re-entered his life, hoping to reacquire his services given his status as WWE Champion. Initially, The Undertaker rejected this proposal, but this led to Paul Bearer blackmailing him. Bearer stated that if Taker did not let him manage again, he would reveal his deepest, darkest secret to the world. Feeling he had no choice, the champion allowed for his former manager back into his circle, but he eventually rejected him again. 
This led to Bearer to reveal the Undertaker's secret to the world, that he had a brother named Cain who had been thought dead for many years but was actually still alive and out for revenge. And after weeks of threats, Cain finally made his debut at Bad Blood In Your House 1997 as The Undertaker battled Shawn Michaels in the first ever Hell in a Cell match and nailed his kayfabe brother with a tombstone pile driver to cost him the win. In the weeks that followed, Paul Bearer continually taunted Taker in a bid to get the dead man to go one-on-one -on -one against his younger brother Kane. The Undertaker finally accepted the challenge after he was locked in a casket by Kane. The two faced off at WrestleMania 14. Taker walked out of it the winner but it wasn't long before the Brothers of Destruction clashed again. The two would meet again at the first ever Inferno match at Unforgiven 1998, just two months after their battle at WrestleMania. The dead man defeated his brother once more, this time by setting his hand on fire. The sibling's relationship would take a drastic turn when Taker started showing signs of a heel turn in the summer of 1998. But before the brothers could officially get back together, the Undertaker and Mankind reignited their feud from 96. The two faced off in a Hell in a Cell match at the King of the Ring in 1998, and it became one of the most iconic matches in wrestling history. During the match, The Undertaker threw Mankind off the roof of the 16-foot cell onto a table below and later chokeslammed him through the cell's roof into the ring. This legitimately knocked Mankind unconscious and Taker himself suffered a broken ankle when he jumped from the top of the cell to the ring canvas. The match was incredibly violent, with both wrestlers attacking each other with steel steps, chairs, and almost anything they could get their hands on. The match finally came to an end when Taker nailed Mankind with a pile driver and pinned him for the win. After ending his rivalry with Mankind, The Undertaker reunited with his brother and even teamed up with Kane to try and defeat Stone Cold Steve Austin for the WWF Championship in a triple threat match. But the two brothers pinned Austin simultaneously, leading to the title being vacated. The brothers would meet in a championship match, but that too would end in a no contest. After this, Taker aligned himself with Paul Bearer again and transformed his character into a dark priest to form a group called the Ministry of Darkness while Kane stepped out of his brother's shadow and did his own thing. He then disappeared for a while to deal with an injury and get married to his second wife, Sarah. In May 2000, The Undertaker returned as the American Badass, a biker character with a completely new look and persona. He formed a tag team with Kane, but the pairing was short-lived, as Kane turned on his brother after they failed to win the tag team titles from Edge and Christian. The two wouldn't cross paths again for three years until the 2003 Survivor Series. The Undertaker controlled most of the match, but right at the end, Kane interfered and helped the McMahon in beating The Undertaker and burying him alive. The dead man would not be seen for four months, but he managed to return just in time for WrestleMania 20. Kane Undertaker's tolling bells, but Taker never came out. The mind games would continue for weeks Mark Henry at the grandest stage of them all and brought his tally up to 14. In 2009, he renewed his feud with fellow wrestler Shawn Michaels. The WrestleMania 25 match between Shawn Michaels and The Undertaker was a masterful display of in-ring storytelling. The storyline was simple but effective, pitting the born-again Michaels against the supernatural Undertaker in a battle of good versus evil. Both performers delivered a match that exceeded expectations. Many believed Michaels would be the one to break the streak, right up until the final seconds of the match, but in the end, it was Taker who walked out the victor. However, Michaels wouldn't let the feud end and challenged The Undertaker to a rematch, which he initially declined. But Michaels was willing to go to any lengths to get what he wanted. He interfered during a World Heavyweight Championship match between Taker and Jericho at Elimination Chamber, costing the dead man the belt. Taker was obviously pissed off and accepted Sean's challenge under one condition, that if he lost, Michaels would retire. HBK accepted. The match was a complete barn burner and the two men left it all in the ring. But in the end, just as it was the year before, 
The Undertaker emerged victorious, hitting Michaels with a jumping tombstone pile driver for the pinfall victory. Michaels was forced to retire from professional wrestling, bringing an end to one of the greatest careers in WWE history. After this, Taker would go on to put on two barn burners against Triple H at WrestleMania 27 and WrestleMania 28, both of which he won. He won against CM Punk at WrestleMania 29 after a highly controversial storyline that saw Punk mock the dead Paul Bearer. He would go on another year-long break and returned on the fronted Brock Lesnar, who had been taunting him for weeks. The two had a heated confrontation, and Lesnar challenged The Undertaker to a match at WrestleMania 30. However, what followed was a shocking turn of events. At WrestleMania 30, after 25 minutes and three F5s, Lesnar defeated The Undertaker by pinfall, ending his streak. It was a stunning upset and left fans in disbelief. The Undertaker had been the undisputed king of WrestleMania for over two decades, but his reign had finally come to an end. Unfortunately, Undertaker's defeat wasn't the only setback he suffered that night. Following the match, he was hospitalized with a severe concussion that he had sustained in the first few minutes of the match. The referee never stopped the match, which allowed Undertaker to surprise Lesnar with a low blow and apply Hell's Gate resulting in Lesnar passing out. This led to a rematch at the Hell in a Cell pay-per-view where Taker was defeated again after Lesnar hit him with a low blow and executed his third F5 of the match. Taker continued on for a couple more years and would only return for big matches at Mania or the Saudi events, such as the one where the Brothers of Destruction teamed up against DX at Crown Jewel 2018. Goldberg in the Super Showdown in 2019, and Roman Reigns at WrestleMania 33. But the less we talk about these matches, the better. Mark William Calloway, known by his ring name The Undertaker, announced his retirement from professional wrestling in 2020 after an illustrious 33-year career.